Hello traders and welcome back to a new educational video. This is your host Richard and today we are going to talk about how to use TradingView. So let's get started and as usual, cheers. For those who know me know that I'm a big fan of TradingView. I've been very active there lately, posted more than 1k ideas and have like almost 30k followers. If you don't know how to find me, you can go to this link, tradingview.com slash you slash the signalist, or simply Google it, tradingview the signalist, and click on search, you will find this profile. I don't know where the follow button would be here or here, but if you find it, I appreciate if you can click on it, of course, if you like the content. Once you get here, you can scroll down and see all my previous ideas or analysis. And uh, if it's a picture analysis, you can click on it and see the result. If it's a video analysis, you can click on it and watch the entire video. And as you clearly see, my analysis or charting is very simple and straightforward. That's why people usually ask me on how do I do it, how to use training view in the best possible way, how to get the most out of the features and objects that you draw on the chart. So in this video, and anyway, we ended up in this video, right? So we are going to cover the basics. So it would be a, like how to use training view part one, where we'll be covering on how to use the tools here, how to add indicators, how to use like the auto and, and, and like watch list, uh, sorry, not watch list, layout. And hopefully in the part two, maybe next week, I'll be covering the uh, alerts, the uh, watch list, the, the power replay and the advanced stuff right but let's keep it as basic as possible for those who don't know at all how to use trading view and so how to get here in the first place right first of all when you open your trading view no matter on which page you are on, on, on a specific profile or on the on the trading view website for example right you'll find the top menu which is here and the first one is the chart so when you click on it you will end up where you will end up here let's wait for it and anyway, we will not need it because you already have it here, but I just wanted to show you. So we don't need this one. We already have our chart here. Now, when you open your chart, it will not open like this. It will have a different template. So let's run it as I personally change it to be like this. I, I like it the most as it is now. So let's go to apply default. Okay, so you will see this one, the grid. I personally don't like it. And it's, it's almost like white. I don't like it at all because it, at night and during the day it's good, but at night it will hurt my eyes. So I like to keep it like a little bit darker. Okay, and I don't like, like the black because it's too dark. So uh, as you saw from my, let me make uh, undo, here we go. So it's a little bit between the two, right? Anyway, let's go back here. So you open your chart the first time you will see this. I don't also like the open high low close. I don't find it useful, at least as per my trading style. I don't like to, uh, to, to see that the bid and the ask and so on. So, I, and of course, here, here we have the upcoming news. For example, if you are trading Euro USD, so you will have only the upcoming news for the Euro and for the USD. For example, if you go to GBP USD, you, you will see not the euro, you will see the GBP, right? And uh, here we go, and the USD. Okay, so it depends on which pair you are trading, you will see the news appropriate or, or, or yes, appropriate to this curve, to this specific pair. So let's get back to our euro USD and how to do it, how to change, like you can also change like the color of the canvas and so on. So you go here to go to settings. And here we go. You can change the body. You can change the wick. For example, you can make like the body in blue. Here we go. You can, you can immediately see it. And you can also make it like this. You can make, for example, the wick. Let's make it in a color that you can see clearly in green. Right. So here we go. So now we just change a little bit here. And you can see that we have the green for the wick and the blue for, for, the, for the body and the red for the bearish candle and blue for the bullish candle. Anyway, I'd, I'd like to keep it the classic way. And, and as you previously saw it, let me go back. Here we go. Right. And I don't like the grid. For example, I go here and, and, and I can remove the grid. Open high, low, close. It's here. So I, I, I remove it. I don't need open high, low, close. Bar change value also. I don't need it. As you saw it here, it disappeared. And where, where is it? Uh, for, and yes, let's go back to this one. You can also remove it from... 
let me find it uh, events here we go show earning on charts show economic events and here we go so you don't see the news anymore and so on okay so you can play with these as much as you want and also you, you can change here we go the grid you can make it like lighter or not for example here uh, of course, you can also add a, a watermark. I don't like it. I don't like, like to see a logo uh, uh, in the middle of, of my chart. But for those who like to take their screenshots and so on, they can like add watermark embedded in plain view. You don't have to have to add it in Photoshop in case they want to like post it somewhere else and don't want anyone to steal it. But but it's all, all up to you. You can, you can like go and check all of these and and try and try to play with it, right? So, so take your time and play with the settings and see. You can, you can immediately see how things are changing here. And you can keep it or remove it and so on. But once you've done, that's why take, take your time and play with it. Once you're done, you can save it, right? So you only do it once. And of course, you can also create, create multiple, multiple like uh, templates. For example, I have only one which is rich, as you can see here. So if I click on it, you, you, you will see it, here we go, right? So I don't have like to, to do it all over again on each instrument. Anyway, let's make Control Z. On Control Z, you, you, you undo just like you, you use any Microsoft like Word and so on, or you can even use the, this one, right? Redo or undo, Control Z and Control Y, okay? So now here we go, you, you know how to change your templates. You, you can make it like change the candles, remove the grid, remove the open high, low, close, and so on. And anyway, it's up to you. If you want to keep it, you can keep it. Next, now you are done with this one. And of course, once you like save it, or once you like choose a template, no matter which chart like, like you choose, for example, let's choose USD card, for example, you go here, you will see the exact same template, okay? So you don't have to, to, to change it every time on, on every uh, uh, instrument, or in this case, it's a Forex pair. Okay, this is it. Next, we'll go for this one, which is the auto scale. I personally like to keep it on. For those who don't like to keep it on, they like, like to change it like this. In this case, you, 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 you will make the height like higher or lower, bigger or smaller. And in this case, you, you will make the weight or, or the width with in this case bigger or smaller i don't like it I, I like it to be always proportional between the x and the y that's why i keep the auto and in this case i can zoom in using the scroll and the mouse right you can zoom in and zoom out or you can even use these ones i do, personally don't like to use it also as it's faster using the mouse you can click here and it will zoom uh, zoom in right you can zoom as, as much as you want and you can zoom out as much as you want i personally don't don't like use these ones i just like zoom out using the mouse and zoom in using the scroll button that's first okay so now we've learned how to come up with the template how to like make the auto and of course i forgot maybe to tell you how to save it so for example you have this template you go here and you click on save as and you can name it whatever you want for example if you make like one black or one red one without open high close one with one on open high and close it depends if you are using like two strategies or if you are back testing or not so it depends on how you are planning to use it you can like save multiple templates so you don't have to change it all over again every time you want to shift on how you are using the chart okay so you sign save it next let's talk about indicators okay so here we go we have this option you click on it and you can see all the indicators we've got plenty plenty of of, of like built-in that, that comes in by default in the trading view uh, platform so you can choose many you can go to candlestick patterns and you can go for like these ones you can scroll as much as you want so you have like rsi macd and so on or you can simply do a quick research here and go for macd for example and you will see all the possible or all the indicators that are available built in as mentioned or public library in training view so this is the default one so if you click on it you will see it here Right. And of course, you can click here and maximize it or minimize it, whatever suits you. 
and this is it. And when you zoom in and zoom out, the indicator, of course, will zoom in and zoom out with the price and show you the, 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 the like, like appropriate values for the appropriate price. Now, let's talk about the indicators. Of course, you can also go to the settings and change whatever you, you can change. First of all, you can change the input. So by default, it's like 12.26.9 for MACD. You can make it like faster. I don't know if, if you would, would like to change the settings so it, it will become faster. And for example, if you want like to change the color, you, you don't want, for example, the signal line to be, where is it? Let me change this one and here we go. So now, so now you don't see the MAC line anymore, right? If, if you can see, and if you click on here, you will, no, you will not no longer see the orange line. This is it. And you can change how you would like to see it as an area, as a column and so on. So if you click on area, you will see that these little histograms, here we go, let me zoom in, would become an area and not a, a, bar, a bar histogram. Right, if you here we go, so it was like this, and now you can make it even a line and so on. So you can play with it on how you would like to see it. It depends, of course, on also on how to use it. Okay, I personally use MACD, but I like it, I like the MT4 version of it. That's why I made it like to look like the MT4, and I made a video about it on YouTube if you would like to check it out on how to optimize this MACD to look like the one on. On MT4, if you click on it, you can see it now. So here we go, right? So we, you can see, I, I like to use this one because on trading view, let me delete this one and add the default one again because we played a lot with this one. Here we go. So so on, on trading view, the, the, the histograms are the fast MACD, right? For, for, for those who know it. So the, the basic uh, MACD histograms are the lines on, on trading view. Okay, that's why I, I'm used to this one. I used to like trade on MT4 for like 10 years now. Now I shifted my analysis on trading view because it's easier and so on. And, and I, I save I saved my charts uh, uh, online and, and it's not like offline on my laptop. So in this case, I can open my charts anywhere. And even if, uh, and even it is auto sync with my phone. So whatever I draw here on UDSD, for example, if I open my phone, I can see the exact same line. Okay, so that's the advantages of trading view. And of course, make sure that you save. Okay, so if you go here, you, you can see that you, you've got auto save on. So every 10 minutes, the system automatically will save whatever you draw. So for example, if I draw this one here and now I click on X, okay, we, we, it will give me like a, a, like, like a pop-up notification that Keep, keep in mind that your, your, your latest drawings are not now saved, okay? So if you click on cancel, make sure to save it first before, uh, before closing the tab or, or whatever you drew after you, the last save would be gone, okay? So always make sure to like save it. And I have a habit, I have a habit that whenever I draw anything without me knowing, so it's my, my unconscious mind. So I just keep on clicking on save. Okay, whatever, I don't see it like a tick inside it, which means that it needs to be saved. I click on it without even knowing. So for example, when I draw it like this, I click on it without thinking. So it would become a habit if, if, you, if you are like concerned that whatever, if you draw anything and maybe you will no longer have a internet connection or your laptop crashes and so on. Okay, so save it as much as you can. So now we are done with this one. The reason why I mentioned uh, the MACD is because uh, we, we, you have a section called favorites, which means that instead of every time if you want to add, for example, the MACD, instead of every time you have to look on and search for it, you can simply make it a favorite. So for example, let me make this one a favorite, MACD crossover. If I make it a favorite, you will now see it here and in your favorite tab. So without you like go go and search for it, let me, I don't know why, why it didn't uh, appear here. Okay, so I guess we, we did it, right? Yes, we did it. So it, it has to appear, where is it? <laughs> okay, so let me, let me do, do for the RSI, let's try it out. 
Here we go. Some favorite. Yes, here, here we go. Yeah, maybe because we already have them. I see what I changed its name to MCDN2 because I updated it. So when, when you click on favorite, you will see it here. Let's try one more. Uh, one more, for example, this is it and click on save. And this is it, right? But I don't need it now, so I will not like add it. And here we go. So I remove now, I will remove them from the saved. And when you add an indicator, if it's on, uh, on the chart on the same window, you can see it here and you can click on X and it will disappear. Or you can click on settings and you can change whatever you want. You can change its color, the upper one. You can change the lower one, for example, to green. You can even change like, like, like the area inside it if you want a background or not, right? And you, you can do whatever you want. Anyway, you can also click uh, and remove it. And of course, once you add an indicator on your chart, wherever you go, for example, if you go to like, uh, as we did before, on GBPUSD, you will also see the indicator here, okay? So that's the, the good thing about it. You don't have to do it on every single chart. Anyway, I don't need it now. And one more thing about the indicators. So favorite, we are done with it how to change the settings, how to like search for it. And for example, we have this one, okay? So I've added this one. The good thing about it is it is now here. So if you don't want to see it because like you can like make it a, a lot, a lot smaller, but you will still see it here, okay? So for example, now you don't need it. You only need like for certain times when the setup is already formed. What will you do is you will, you will make a double click. So double click and it will disappear. It will not like be deleted, it will just disappear for a while because now you don't need it. Whatever you need, you just, what do you do? You will also click, you make double click, okay? And, and you will see it. And of course you make it like a smaller or bigger and double click and it will disappear. When you don't, no longer need it, you can click on the X. Now you don't have anything. Even if you do double click, you, you will not see it, okay? So that's it, templates, indicators, uh, how to remove it and so on. Now let's go for the, for the features okay, or for the objects. Later on, we'll go over this, this side and this side. And, but for now, let's go over this side. First of all, you have this one. You have a cross. I personally like the cross and I made it like uh, here in the settings, I, I made it like to appear like a, a, a little bit lighter. Uh, for, for some traders, like the dotted that you see here, uh, uh, vertical and horizontal, they are like uh, darker. Okay, I like it to be like, I still want to see it, but not like too much. Okay, and you will see here the time and you will see here the price, wherever you go, the time and price changes. Okay, and you can also use the arrow. For example, you don't want to, see, to, to use the cross, you can use the dot and so on. I personally like the cross. Okay, so this is one, this is very basic. Now let's go over the lines. Also, you can make it favorite why and how you can see it here now. So I don't, if, for example, I want to draw a trend line. I don't have to go here and like search for it for a horizontal line or for a trend line or for anything. But for the most ones that I use frequently, what I would do is I will make them favorite and this way they will be shown here. And this box, I can make it higher, lower. I can put it wherever I want. I personally like to put it here. We have like a blank space here. So I use it and I put like this one here. And I'll tell you why here and not here. I put it here. Here we have the time. I, I still want to see it some, sometimes. And now I have all the tools that I believe that or that I use frequently are here. So if I want to use the trend line, I can go here and click on it, I can go to Alt, uh, uh, Alt T, or I can simply go here, okay? So if I go here, I click on it, and I click, and then I can click again. So this is the beginning and the end of it. Once I draw it, I can make it higher or lower by simply click on it and drag and drop, okay? So this is the first one, and of course, this is it, right? So that's why I make uh, this one, let me make it like this, this one and a little bit to the right because I also put this one here, okay? So this way it, it will not be on my chart. So it will not bother me on the chart. It is like down here. It doesn't affect anything. So once I draw a trend line and click on it, I can see it here and I can play with its settings. I can make it like thicker, for example, times four, and you can see it's getting bigger. I, I personally don't like to be like one. It's very small. I like to see it, but not like too much. This is one, 
to I can change its color, I can make it red, and so on. Of course, I can also change the type, I can make it dotted, dashed, and so on. I personally like it to be a whole line. This is, this is the first one. Second, what I personally like to use is this one, which is the arrow, which is also from this like, like family or from this section. Okay, you can also use the trend angle if you want to like calculate the angle, but whatever you use. Sometimes I use it to see that the trend line is too steep or not. For example, you go here and you can see what is the angle of, of the trend that you are drawing. But again and again, it depends on if you, are, you want to use it or not. And you, of course, you can play with all the settings and see if you find anything useful. But for me, I only use the trend line. I use the horizontal line to draw my support and resistance. Okay, so you simply like click on it. Now you can drag and drop it. And of course, you can go to settings, change its color. You can change its thickness, make it times four. Or you can even go to the settings and co coordinates. So change it. Like for example, I want to make it 1.39. Right, instead of like make it like this, lower and higher, and try to catch the exact number, I simply would go here and make it 1.39 and click on OK. Or I can make it like 1.39, I don't know, 5, and you will see it will immediately change to 1.395. Anyway, let's keep it 2 and let's keep it in blue. Okay, next, we can also click on the lock. Sorry, cheers. Okay, you can click on the lock. This way, even if you, if you, if, if you try to catch it, you, you will not be able. So this way, if, if you like, for example, you are doing your analysis and you don't want to like move it by mistake, simply click on the lock. In this case, even if, for example, you are drawing any other trend lines and you, you will not move it by mistake. While this one, it's not locked. So if you click on it, you can like move it. You can move it like this like this, or as we saw previously in the middle, you can make it higher or lower. And of course, if you click on the lock, in this case, you, you will no, no longer be able to, to, like, to, 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 to like change its position, of course, until you unlock it. And let's unlock this one as well. This, this way you can also like now change it. And for, if you want to delete it, you can click on it, click on this, remove, or you can simply click on delete on, on, uh, 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 on your keyboard. And if you did it by mistake, you can go here and click on undo, or I personally would like to use Control Z, okay? So, and of course you can click here and you can click on redo and you can click on undo. This is one second, no matter which object that you are using, for example, a line, for example, let's see here, we have like many, many signs like this one, N no matter which object, and let's make it, for example, and, and purple, okay? The good thing is you don't, for example, you don't, you have to draw, like want to draw a trend line and you want to make an offset for it, for it to become a channel. Yes, you can, you can use a parallel channel here, but I don't like it. I like to, because, because not always you will have a exactly parallel. Sometimes you'll have a wedge, okay? So that's why I like to make the lower trend line like higher or lower a, a, a little bit and not exactly a trend line. So for example here, what you can do is to make an offset, you simply click on control and hold, okay, on your keyboard, click on control, and now click on this one and drag and drop. Right now you have you have a channel, and as mentioned before, I can make this one higher or lower. I can even make it an I don't know blue and so on. Okay, and you can click on Control again, offset, offset, and again and again and again. Right, so you can make an offset as much as you want, so you don't have to draw it all over again. Okay, and of course undo 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 Control Z Control Z Control Z and so on. Okay, so this is first. Second, of course, you can do the district on all like objects, no matter if it's a horizontal line, also control, hold, here we go. And this one as well, control and hold, okay? And for this one, you can make it like bigger, smaller, you can make it like ro rotate as much as you, li you like. Control Z again and again and again, and this is it. Now let's talk about, the, oh, before we go over there, let's talk about the when, when I want to make the trend line to appear, okay? So for example, I am from daily time frame now, I'm drawing my uh, support and resistance. 
for example, I have, I don't know, a support here. It's not like a financial advice, just to, so that we use uh, we, we, how to use the object. But we didn't talk about this one yet. So let's let's draw a horizontal line. So th th this one is a box. You can find it here, right? You will talk about this one in a bit. So for example, I want to see this one here and I want to make it in green, for example, for the support and for the resistance, I want to use the color red, okay? Of course, click on save always. Now I want to zoom, zoom into lower time frames, for example, on H4, but I didn't see the box. Why? Because if you go to the settings here and settings, you will go to visibility and you will see that it will not show on H4. It's only showing on H1, H2, and H3. So if you go here and type H4 or 5 or whatever, but uh, include H4, then click on OK, and then go to H4, and now you will see it. This is first. This is very important because, for example, if you want to draw a trend line, and you can go to the settings and choose where you want to see it. For example, I don't want to see it on daily time frame. If you go to daily, you will see that it's it's not good to see on daily because I don't need it here. I need it on a lower time frame. That's why I don't need to see it. This, this is how you make the chart as clean as possible. Only make the tools that that that, that like suit the time frame that you are looking on the most. And this is how you can make it as clean as possible. So I don't want to see this one on daily. So I click, I untick it and I no longer see it. I can also choose where I want to see it. For example, here, I see it on the, on the hours, H1, 2, 3, 4, and on the minutes from 1 to 59, which is obviously I only use the M30. So even if I like make it 29 to 31, I can still see it on the, the, the M30 or M30 and I'm 30, okay? So click on okay. Now I can see it on H4, H1, and I'm 30 also, okay? If I didn't mention it, here, here you can choose the time frames. Here are the most five time frames that I use, I personally use, but you can click here and you can also click on favorite so that you will see it here. As you can see, I've, I've put favorite on M30, H1, H4 daily and weekly. If you put also a, a, a months, then you can see it here. I personally rarely check it. So I, I sometimes check it, but I rarely do. So that's why I don't need it here. For example, if you add M15, you will see it here. I don't zoom in below M30. So it depends on you, right? For example, some traders only use the 5, 15, and H1 chart. They don't like they are scalpers or they are day traders. I'm personally a swing trader. Anyway, the section is about how to stay in view and not about traders' uh, types, right? But types of traders. So this is it. Now, now we've learned how to set up the template, how to like make a box or like any object appear on one time frame, not another, how this one works. Now let's continue with these ones before we end this session. This is it. I personally use only these three. The arrow is when I'm, for example, I make my analysis, I'm waiting for a close below this area so that I would sell, for example. So this is why I put like an arrow like this. And it's, it's simply a trend line, but with an, with an arrow, right? So th this is very simple. And which is here, obviously, that you saw it, I made it a favorite. Next. Here we go. I don't. I don't use Fibonacci or or or, or, or any other uh, tool here. I just use Fibonacci, and which is around here. So I don't use the GAN and so on. But if you use it, you can. You have multiple features for the Fibonacci and for the pitchfork. Okay. Next, we have these ones that you can draw on the chart. So first of all, I use the brush. I use the path and the rectangle and ellipse. The ellipse is, I personally like to draw a head and shoulders pattern using the ellipse, okay? So and again, it depends on how you'd like to use it. And of course, you, you can't really use it. Uh, you, can, you can't use it. There are many options that you can draw head and shoulders pattern with, which is let me try and uh, find it. So probably you don't need this one. And Okay, so here for those who are who like who like Elliott waves and they want to like number the waves, here we have like long short position. We'll get back to this one in a bit. And here you have the objects. Okay, I personally don't like to use the object, 
For example, I don't need to like put a megaphone on the chart, right? But it depends on you if you would like to add anything. Anyway, uh, so, some traders would like to use, let, let, let me find it, uh, a curve. What is the, yes, here we go, right? So instead of, of like using the ellipse, some traders like to use the curve, which you can see here. Let's make it smaller and this way, this way. And let's see this one. So they like to use the curve for the head and shoulders patterns, for example. And anyway, it's still forming. So we only have the left and the head. And here we go. So you, you, you draw one, you make an offset. So here's our head. And now you are waiting for the right shoulder to form. And in this case, what I would do is I would go here and I click on the, no, not click on the arrow. I would click on the path. The path is good when you can find it here on the third one right, just next to the rectangle and so on. On the path, what I would do is I will draw like, for example, I'm waiting for this. Whenever I click, another one will appear. Whenever I click, one will appear, right? I click, and when I'm done, I will click on the what, on, 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 on the escape, right? So I click on it, and then it will stop, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, for example, and then click here, and then click on escape. This is it, okay? And this is it. This is the path for, for the rectangles. I personally use it sometimes to black like spot plan demand. I like to use the levels to spot the uh, squan resistance. And I usually like to use it as a zone. So this is my entire squan resistance zone. So I draw two levels. And for plan demand zones, I draw uh, like uh, zones, which is obviously that you saw it here, which is the rectangle. Okay, I click here and you can change whatever you want inside it. You can make it like lighter or, 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 or like uh, darker. Here we go. I personally like it like in the middle, like this. You can change its color. So that this is the inside and the border is that you can find here. I usually, for example, I use purple here. I use a lighter purple, okay? So for example, if I want it to be a gray one, Okay, I don't want it to be like, like, like the border to be purple. I put it a light gray. Okay, so this is how you see a box. Some, some traders or some members would like to make it like appear a lot, for example, that you can see it. I, I don't like to see it. I like to make it lighter and I use the same color. And of course you have many, many options also. Let me, let me find it out. Uh, for example, here you can make it lighter. Okay, so something is like used like this or even like this. So they only want to see the, the borders. Here we go, for example. Okay, I don't like it this way. I like to see an entire zone, control Z, control Z, and so on. Okay, so this is it. I'll delete it now or I click on delete on the keyboard as mentioned before. Next, next, next we've got, yes, before we, we finish this, I like the brush a lot. I used a lot, especially in my videos. Uh, and you, you all know it for those who know me, I like to use the brush, here we go. That's why it's, it's my favorite one because I use it a lot. And here we go. So like whatever I want to draw, whatever I want to show, but now I'm waiting for price to go higher and then I'll be looking for sell around here. Then a price as, approach, as it approaches the support, I'll be looking for buy around here. This is it and of course, control Z, I will remove it. Next, I have the arrow, which is where, which is around here. Only here I use the call out and I use the arrow. Sometimes I use the text when I post on training view. I click here and I write, for example, uh, GBP USD, right? And I make it bold or not. I can make it bigger or not, right? I can make it in blue and so on. So I put it here, for example, and I post and I says GBP USD, but that's not my favorite because I don't use it a lot. But I like, I like the call out. For example, for those who like see my analysis, they know that, for example, it's not like a valid setup, but let's say I'm waiting for price to form a new swing here and then buy on spec upward. I'm waiting for price to break above this last swing to enter a buy. I don't know where. Yes, here we go. Okay, then I'll do my call out here and that this is my trigger. Of course, I can make it smaller or bigger. I can make it like in a different color and so on, but let's keep it this way. Let's not play with, with my settings. And for example, I go here and for example, I go for support area, right? So this is the call out option, which you see 
here and i also use the arrow marker i i use it personally to like identify uh, support and resistance areas or, or when i identify a point resistance what i would do is for example i have a support here a resistance here let's delete uh, these ones let's say and let's make this one in blue and i would simply do as i will bring this arrow which you see here uh, it's an arrow, uh, arrow marker and i will make it like this i will not like make it a lot bigger but i'll just make it like this so that now i know from the first glance whenever i open my chart again of course i will save that then I will, I will close it then whenever i open my chart again i will immediately know that i'm looking for cell setups here and point setups here because i analyze like 30 charts or even sometimes more that's why i don't like to like go and do the work all over again i can see from the first glance what i'm waiting for in this specific instrument so i went over the horizontal arrow uh, trend line path rectangle arrow marker ellipse we did it already the brush and the call out and the fibonacci replacement i don't like the objects i don't uh, uh, yes we still have like like price range I don't personally use it. So in case you want to see the price range from here to here, if you want to calculate like the pips, you can use like this measure tool and you can see how many like like pips uh, from here to here. For example, here it's like 333 pips, okay? In case you, you, you want to calculate your position size. Last but not least, we have like bar patterns. Some traders use it, I don't personally use it. For example, if I want to make a projection, here, here we go, from here to here, it will copy and paste like, like the shape of this movement, then I can bring it up and, and do it like this. For those who like watch some things on training view and they don't know how they do it, this is how they do it. They go here and click on bar patterns. And you have anyway, a lot, a lot of options. I don't want this one. <laughs> I did by mistake. So, and they can change its color, for example, to uh, let me adjust this one, for example, to blue, right? And, and this is it. Anyway, I don't need it. And you got, you got many, many options and feel free to play with everything and see if it's useful for, for you or not. And of course, uh, you can go for long positions. For example, if I want to enter a buy, I click on auto again, here we go. So I want to enter a buy, for example, where is it? Okay, if I want to enter with a short position or a long position, if it's a short position, I click anywhere on the chart, and as you can see, it's a short position. So the upper one is the stop, stop loss, that's why it's in red. The lower one is in green, which is the target. Okay, I can make this one higher and lower, whatever I, I, I want. For example, I want to make the stop loss just above the highs and to take profit just like around uh, the low here. And for example, this is my entry. And here I can see the risk to reward ratio. So now in this particular case, the take profit is 2.5 times bigger than the stop loss. If I make it like lower, now it becomes like two times bigger than this one. So no matter how like smaller or bigger, this one goes up or down, as you can see the risk to reward ratio would like go up or down. And this is very useful if you want to calculate your risk to reward ratio and make a projection that I personally always start with double my stop plus like uh, uh, my stop plus size okay and of course this is for the short setup for the long here we go you've got like a long and this is your stop loss whatever you want to place it and this is your take profit okay for example I what I would do is if I have uh, what, what is it if I have a trend line I, I can't really I, I guess I deleted it right so if, if I have a trend line, and I'm waiting. I don't. You, you see how annoying this one is because it's from daily. It shouldn't be shown here. So I click here. I don't want to see it here. I did only want to see it on daily. So I no longer see it on lower time frames. I only need to see it here. We go on daily time frame. However, the horizontal span resistance. I should see them on on all time frames. So that's why you see it, it's it's all ticked. Okay, so this is it, for example, I want to, even though it's not valid, but let's say just for the sake of this example, I want to enter a buy here. And this is my 
I like I like entry, the, the possible entry. I want to enter a long position here, the star plus above, below, sorry, the last swing low and target a two to one supervision, risk reward issue. So this is how I know where my target should be if I want to target a two to one risk reward issue. Or for example, if you target the next resistance, so you put your target there and this way you will know, get an idea about what is your potential risk to reward ratio. Okay, and don't forget to click always on save. For this example, I no longer need these ones because I don't need it on my chart just for this video. You can go here and you can click here and remove drawings. Click on it and this is it. You will no longer have any drawings on the chart. So I will do it, but be careful if you want to keep the drawings, don't do it, obviously. Okay, so that's it for part one. Hopefully on part two, we'll go over these ones, more features as mentioned before, like the bar replay, like the watch list, like the layout and so on. Best of luck, hope you like it. If you like it, you can help the channel out by clicking on the like button and feel free to request any like new ideas, any new video ideas or instrument analysis in the comment section below. And I'll see you on the next one.